Do you know that pica is eating of non-nutritive substance in infant and toddler which can lead to not only worm infestation but also lead poisoning. Teeth grinding is very scary for the parents. It can lead to temporomandibular joint pain as well as facial pain. Thumb sucking or finger sucking is very common behavior in infant and toddler but it can lead to severe peronychia as well as mal occlusion and alignment of teeth. And these habits should be taken care of before 5 years of the age because it will disturb the permanent dentition also. Functional disorder versus Tourette syndrome. There are many differentiating points between these two and to learn those differentiating points, you need to watch this video till end. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to learn common behavioral problems in pediatric age group. Do not skip anything. Watch till the end. Let's get started. Hi, I am Dr. Triya Virani Malde, pediatrician and consultant neonatologist. I'll be your guide for pediatric subject. If you are new to my channel, please do subscribe and give like to this video because it really motivates me when I see likes on my video. So let's start with the questions, head banging, hair twirling, rocking, thumb sucking and teeth grindings as well as nail bitings all are options are habit disorders that probably relieve tension, be easy to cure in children, C evidence of insecurity in the majority of children and of poor quality parenting by their parents, D ticks. First of all, it's a combination of all the things so it is not tick. So tick is out. It could not be evidence of insecurity in the majority of the children. It's just part of their development like thumb sucking is part of a developmental stages of children. So this option is also not correct. Easy to cure in children. It is not easy to, easy to cure. It requires many things which is done by parents as well as children. Yes, all of these are habit disorders and it is done by the children to relieve the tension. So correct answer is habit disorder that probably relieve tension. What is pica? Your option are intrauterine sucking, thumb sucking, foreign object being out in the mouth or none of the above. Correct answer is foreign object being kept in the mouth. That is the correct option. So what is pica? It is persistent eating of non-nutritive substance such as wood, chalk, charcoal, paint, lead, earth for at least one month. Occasionally if the child is playing outside and if he puts something in the mouth for one or twice, it's not called pica. If it is more than a month, it is observed by the parents or caretaker for more than a month, we call it pica. In a manner that is inappropriate for the developmental level. Like I have seen, I have told already that it is commonly seen in infants and toddler. So if it is seen beyond that age, then it should be considered as abnormal. It is commonly associated with developmental delay. The child who are having delay who doesn't know that it should not be put in the mouth. They are doing that behavior. It could be a part of parental neglect. The parents are not stopping the child or making him understand that it should not be eaten by you. Then it, the, the behavior could be repeatedly seen. It is commonly observed in poor socioeconomic class. Part of malnutrition because iron deficiency, anemia, calcium deficiency, those all deficiency could lead to compulsive behavior of eating mud or paint or chalk. As we have already discussed, it could be a part of iron deficiency, anemia. So pica is common in less than 15 years, 5 years, 10 years or it is common in 2 years. So correct answer it, it is common in less than 5 years old child. What category of the children are predisposed to pica? Parental abuse, parental neglect, developmental delay or all of the above? Correct answer is all of the above. This all we have already discussed that these three category are predisposed to pica. Children with pica are at increased risk of lead poisoning, mud addiction, hair foil or skin dryness. Apart from lead poisoning, one more is worm infestation also could be seen with pica. So correct answer is option A, lead poisoning. How to treat a pica? There are many therapies available. It is part of behavioral modification. We have to deworm the child. Albendazole less than 2 year, we have to go give 2 mg at bedtime. There are chewable tablet which, which is available and more than two years the dose is 400 ml. Iron syrup to be given and calcium syrup to be given. Thumb sucking. Now let's have some uh, discussion about thumb sucking. Thumb sucking picks at this age and it disappears by this age. The correct answer is two years and four years, one year and three years, six months and five years, 
15 years and 8 years here the question is pick set not start set so correct answer is option a these are just number has to be remembered by you so it is 2 years it picks and it disappears by the age of 4 years what is thumb sucking it it is also a habit disorder it is self soothing behavior to relieve the tension it is seen commonly in infants and toddler it picks by the age of 18 to 21 months it disappears by the age of 4 years beyond 5 to 6 years if it persists it can lead to dental malalignment to avoid disfigurement of permanent teeth finger sucking should be terminated by the age of 8 years to avoid disfigurement of permanent teeth finger sucking should be terminated by the age of 8 years 5 years 3 years and 2 years so first of all it is a permanent teeth so we should know that when the permanent dentition starts so i have made a very beautiful video on dentition and bone age estimation if you have not gone through it please go through it link is in the description box as well as there is i button permanent dentition starts by the age of 6 years so to avoid the disfigurement and the malalignment of permanent teeth by the age of 5 years at least finger sucking or thumb sucking should be terminated so correct answer is option b 5 years permanent lower central incisor to erupt at the age of 6 year if thumb sucking is terminated by 5 before the eruption of permanent teeth mal occlusion tend to correct itself so what problems it could cause first of all it can lead to peronychia a fungal and bacterial infection of nail secondly it can lead to anti open bite you can see there is a place because the place where the teeth has to grow is occupied by either finger or thumb so it will lead to the anti open bite it can lead to misalignment as well as mal occlusion you can appreciate in this picture that there is misalignment as well as mal occlusion so what is false about thumb sucking can lead to mal occlusion is a so source of pleasure is a sign of insecurity must be treated vigorously in the first year just now we have discussed that it should be treated before at the age of 5 years and it is normal behavior between the age of 2 to 4 years so here correct answer is option d rest 3 are correct that it can lead to mal occlusion it is a source of pleasure it's a sign of insecurity but you should not be treating it vigorously in the first year of life The next topic is teeth grinding. It's a bruxism. Begin in first five years of life. It is seen because of daytime anxiety and could lead to TM joint pain. Bruxism can lead to dental occlusion, like it is seen in this picture. In sleep, it could be because of worm infestation or iron deficiency anemia. So next important topic is tick. What is tick? Tick is basically tick is a abrupt onset it is fast paroxysmal non rhythmic it should not be rhythmic because if it is rhythmic then it is a stereotypic then it is seen in autism here it is non rhythmic it could be motor part of muscle it could be vocal and it should be seen at least for 6 month occasionally once or twice if it is observed by the parents or caretaker we should not be that much worried but if it is continuously observed by the parents for at least of 6 months then we can label that child is having tick disorders so what is echolalia before going to the actual tick we should know that what is echolalia it is repetition of own words and phrases it's a repetition of word and phrases of others it is mimicking and imitating gestures of others or both a and b echolalia is basically a terminology in which which is applied to a child who is repeating the words or phrases which is heard by him whomsoever is around the child whatever he or she is speaking will be repeated by the child that is called echolalia so option b is correct it's not repetition of his or her own words or phrases it is repetition of words and phrases of others which is heard by the child what is pelelalia it's a repetition of own words and phrases repetition of heard words and phrases none of the above or it is both a and b correct answer is pelelalia is means child repeats the word which is spoken by him or her only so option a is correct repetition of own words and phrases what is echopraxia now praxia it is not lalia lalia is all about speech 
Prexia is all about behavior. So a repetition of own words and phrases, b repetition of words and phrases of others, mimicking and imitating gestures of others or none of the above. We know Prexia is related to gesture. So option C is correct. It's mimicking and imitating gesture of others. So why do we need to know all these things? Because we are going to learn about motor tics and vocal tics. Motor tics could be simple or complex. Simple means it involves one muscle group. Complex means it's, it involves multiple muscle groups. Simple could be just eye blinking, shoulder shrugging or a neck jerking. While complex is a foot tapping. Echoprexia means imitating others and coproprexia means absence gesture. Foul gestures are used or absence gestures are used by the child which is not socially acceptable. And while vocal tics are also simple and complex, simples are like throat clearing, <coughs> <coughs> sniffing or <coughs> coughing. While complex is coprolalia means again the foul language or a socially unaccepted language is used by the child. Ecolalia means repeating uh, heard words and phrases. Pelilalia means repeating own words and phrases. So this three terminology should be remembered by you. So ticks are like hiccup. I have to stop but I cannot. Age of onset is around 4 to 6 years and it picks around the age of 10 to 12 years. So whenever we are discussing a tick along with it very one very important one syndrome need to be kept in our mind that is known as the Tourette syndrome. So all are true regarding Tourette syndrome except multiple motor ticks can be present. Clonidine is used in treatment. Ticks as per DSM-5 should be seen for at least six months or vocal ticks usually do not occur with motor ticks. So here we are going to discuss the answer but correct answer is option C that at least six months. Here it is not six months, it is 12 months that is one year. Rest all are correct in context to a Tourette syndrome which we are going to discuss in upcoming slides. So what is Tourette syndrome? The cause of Tourette syndrome is not known. It is complex, complex disorder in which there is many factors, genetic as well as environmental factor. It is seen in many families as a dominant gene with more penetration in male. And there is involvement of neurotransmitter dopamine serotonin in this disorder. It starts before the age of 7 and it peaks, it peaks by the age of 10 to 12 years. It begins usually with the simple motor tics and then multiple tics, complex vocal tics could be seen. Coprolalia is characteristic that is a use, a use of absence or foul language by the child but seen only in 10% of the cases. Could be associated with ADHD, obsessive compulsive disorder as well as anxiety. So what are the DSM-5 criteria for Tourette syndrome? A. Both multiple motor and one or more vocal tics have been present at some time during the illness not necessary concurrently. It is not compulsory to have motor tics as well as vocal tic at the same time but it should be there like more or one or more motor as well as one vocal tic should be present to have a diagnosis of Tourette syndrome. Tics may wax and wane in, in frequency but have persisted for at least more than a year. Onset is before the age of 18 and the disturbance is not attributable to the phys physiological effect of substance like cocaine or any other medical condition like Hutchinson, Korea or etc. So how we are going to differentiate the Tourette syndrome from the provisional tic disorder or a chronic tic disorder. Tourette syndrome we already seen that two motor and at least one vocal and there should be it should be for more than a year. Provisional is either motor or vocal not both less than a year either motor or vocal more than a year then we call it a chronic tic disorder here it is just a provisional tic disorder now how we are going to differentiate between the functional tic disorders and Tourette syndrome if you see the difference functional tic disorder usually starts at the age of 10 here it is seen in young child usually less than 7 years here female are more affected than male while Tourette male is more affected in, uh, than female. Tick interferes with the normal action. Here does not interfere with the normal action. It cannot be suppressed by suppressed at all. Less often have urge. Functional tic disorder it is happening the person is not aware. Here the child is always having urge before a tick. 
मेडिकेशन डोंट हेल्प हियर चाइल्ड माइट गेट बेनिफिट फ्रॉम द मेडिसिन्स फ्यू ऑफ द थिंग्स आर कॉमन इन बोथ द डिसऑर्डर्स एनजाइटी ओ सी डी ए डी एच डी एंड ए एस डी कैन बी पार्ट ऑफ बोथ इट इज वर्स विद द स्ट्रेस इट इज दिस इज ऑल्सो अप्लाइड टू बोथ एंड साइकोलॉजिकल थेरापी इज ऑलवेज हेल्पफुल इन बोथ द डिसऑर्डर वेदर इट इज फंक्शनल टिक डिसऑर्डर्स और टॉरेट डिसऑर्डर अ सिक्स ईयर्स ओल्ड बॉय प्रेजेंट विद कंप्लेन ऑफ हाइपर एक्टिविटी एक्सेसिव शोल्डर्स श्रगिंग थ्रोट क्लियरिंग एंड आई ब्लिंकिंग ड्यूरिंग एग्जामिनेशन ही इज नॉट कॉपरेटिव यूजिंग ऑप्शंस वर्ड्स एंड रन्स अराउंड व्हाट इज द मोस्ट प्रोबेबल डायग्नोसिस वी ऑल नो that the symptoms are few of the symptoms are suggestive of adhd but adhd will not have use of options words most of the time hyperactivity could be a part of tic disorder that is torrid syndrome but rest all vocal vocal tic as well as the multiple muscles muscular tics at the same time is seen in a tic disorder that is torrid syndrome psychomotor seizures will have aura as well as some of the buccolingual movement but and it lasts for only 1 to 3 minutes after that it is all gone childhood psychosis is also not a feature of the scenario which is given here so correct answer is tic disorder which of the following symptoms is correct about gilidella torrid syndrome it is characterized by tics and coprolalia characterized by tics and encorposis it is treated with haloperidol and methylphenidate it is common disorder of childhood The first sentence is correct so this is correct is it characterized by tic as well as encorposis no it is treated with haloperidol and methylphenidate haloperidol could be a part of treatment but methylphenidate although it is not preferred by many clinician methylphenidate is not used for the treatment of tourette syndrome so this statement is also incorrect it is common disorder of childhood no it is not that common disorder of childhood so correct answer is option a it is characterized by t tic and coprolalia so what is the treatment of tourette syndrome it is treated by haloperidol pimozide but risperidone is preferred and risperidone is having a equal effect as clonidine in reducing tics so that's that's all about behavioral disorders of children in today's lecture I hope you all understood and learnt well. Your suggestions are always welcome. Please write in the comment box that what else you would like to learn from me. Till that time, take care of yourself. Study hard as well as study smart. Bye.